In this video, we're going to learn about the polishing machine and the dust collection unit. We're going to take some of the mystery out of both of these pieces of machinery. We'll talk about the supplies and the materials that are needed to use the polishing machine correctly. And also, I will demonstrate how to polish on the polishing machine correctly and safely. I'm Greg Greenwood. Welcome to my studio. Let's get started. Please consult any safety data sheets for your personal protection on any machinery and polishing compounds that you are using. This is my polishing wheel and dust collection unit. It's a two-speed motor at 3450 and 1725 RPMs with dual spindles. These are threaded tapered spindles which make it easy to install and remove the buffs. The dust collection unit sucks most of the dust and dirt through these grills. Let's take a look behind the scenes. The top of the unit opens up and inside there's a filter, motors, and our two grills where the air gets sucked in through the filter from these two exhaust fans which exhaust out the back of the unit. The air and dirt's pulled through and gets caught in the filter and as you can see it's pretty dirty there. It's time definitely to change the filter. You don't want all of this to be floating around your studio. We throw away the old filter and put the new filter in. Just as simple as that. For those of you who don't have a dust collection unit, I have an alternative for you a little bit later in the video. These are some of the supplies that you're going to be needing for your polishing wheel. We've got the buffs, the compounds, and the safety equipment. First of all, with the safety equipment, you want to make sure that you're wearing some kind of a safety goggle or glass. This is really important. Those pieces get caught in that wheel and they come flying out of there and they hit your eye. It's all over with. So make sure that you do wear your safety goggles. I'm pausing the video at this point because this is where all of us glaze over and don't pay much attention to the safety issues or instructions. It is like when the flight attendant is giving you the life-saving instructions just before takeoff. The polishing machine can be very dangerous. You have to take precautions when using it. I don't want any of you to injure yourselves. We just talked about the safety goggles. I also want you to tie your hair back if you have long hair. Don't let it hang down in front of you. Don't wear loose clothing, especially with floppy sleeves. Also, remove all necklaces and bracelets. I even like to remove any rings. They can get caught in the wheel. All of this is extremely important. I don't want any of you to get hurt. Safety first. Let's get back to the video. Also, your mask. The dust collection unit takes a lot of that crud, which you saw in the back here, it's pretty gross, out of the air, but there still is some, you should be wearing your dust mask. Then also, you may want to protect your fingers. I like to use um, uh, just my bare hands when I'm polishing, but sometimes those pieces will get really hot, and you can use some little leather gauntlets uh, that just go on your fingers. You do not want to be wearing gloves. Don't wear gloves. If that wheel catches that glove, it's not going to pull the glove off. It's going to pull your hand right into the wheel and you're going to break some fingers and it's going to be really bad news. Do not wear gloves. You can use an alligator skin wrapping around your fingers if you wish. Or also, if you are using your bare hands, you can use a little bowl of water here and then as you're polishing and that piece gets hot, you can just dunk it in some water and that'll cool it off. The buffs that are on the market, there's tons of them and it's really confusing which ones to get. I like to use the muslin wheels that have stitchings on them and, <clears throat> and then as they wear down you cut out the stitchings and it'll make it soft again. So this is soft but still has some good resistance to it for your polishing and this is using the polishing compounds and the cutting action. This is one of a little bit thinner 
here if we're getting into smaller areas. Then a nice fluffy uh, wheel for your red rouge, for your coloring compounds. So those are the basic, that's all really all you need. And the compounds that you would be using, again, we've talked about this before, there's hundreds of them on the market. I like to use just either regular tried and true Tripoli compound, uh, and I've also used white diamond compound uh, for many years. It's a great cutting action compound, works nice. Then also your standard, the red rouge for your coloring compound, bringing out the luster in the, in the pieces. Now that you've decided which buff that you want to put on the polishing wheel, how do we get it on there and how do we get it to stay? You notice on this motor, the arbor that comes out on the left hand side has a tapered spindle on it. And this tapered spindle has threads on here which will cooperate with the rotation of the motor. The motor will rotate down towards you and then back in this direction. And these threads will work in that direction so when you put the polishing wheel onto the tapered spindle, the action of the motor will automatically screw into the polishing uh, wheel and it will hold it on nice and tight. When you first start out, it's really a good idea to go ahead and put your wheel on, hold the tapered spindle, and then you can spin it backwards and it will tighten up. Uh, this is a good safe way of doing it. Uh, many people, including myself, uh, after you get really used to the wheel, you can turn the motor on and then just flip it on to there and it'll tighten up automatically. Let me show you how that works. Now, how do we put our pieces of metal against the buffs as it's rotating around? What we want to do is we want to be working in this front lower quarter of the wheel from the mid section all the way down. Do not work in the upper section here because if it gets caught it will throw the metal out at you. This way it will throw it down and hit the bottom of the dust collection unit and then wrap it around on the inside. So only work in this front quarter, front lower quarter. This is a safe zone for you to be polishing. Now that we have our buff on the wheel, how do we start polishing the pieces of metal the safe way? You're going to be working in the front lower quarter and you're going to be always working in the lower half of your piece of metal. This is a piece of cardboard here and let's pretend that it's a piece of silver and you'll always be working in the lower half of your metal polishing from here on down and then you'll turn it a quarter of a turn and you'll polish it from here on down turn it a quarter of a turn, polish it from there on down, and so on, all the way around. So you're hitting the metal at all different angles. This will polish it really well. You want to not polish it all in one direction because this will start putting grooves in the metal and those are very difficult to get out. So you're going to be hitting it from all different angles. You do not want to polish in the upper half of your piece of metal always turn it around. Why do we do that? Is because this edge right here is a trailing edge and as you're working here it's nice and safe in the lower quarter in the lower half of your piece of metal. But now let's say you start getting up toward the top here this edge will catch the wheel and flip it down and into the machine. Stay away from this trailing edge at all costs. Always work in the lower half of your metal. No matter how big a piece of metal it is, from very small to very large, you want to work in the lower half in the lower front quarter. Now let's put some compound on the wheel and do a little polishing on some silver. I'll turn this on. It's a little bit loud so I won't talk. So I'm going to put the compound on and then start working in the lower half of this sheet of silver, turn my quarter of a turn and keep rotating around.
Moving back and forth over the piece, keep it moving, don't hold it in one spot. And now I've polished the lower half, I'm going to turn it around, quarter of a turn, and polish across here. Keep it moving, turn it a quarter of a turn, do the lower half. If it seems to be a little low on the compound, just take your compound and again, put the compound on in the front lower quarter. Keep it moving. And there's the safe way of polishing your sheet metal. As we're polishing wires on the polishing wheel, it's not a safe idea. There are way too many trailing edges here for you to get caught up on. A good safe alternative is to go ahead and use your flexible shaft. And never ever even think of polishing chains on the polishing wheel. This is a recipe for disaster. Use your hand polishing techniques on chains. Now you're saying to yourself, hey, it's really great to have a nice two-speed polishing machine with a dust collection unit. Um, but hey, I'm a little short of cash. Well, I was short of cash when I first started out too, like all of us. And my first polishing machine, I took an old motor off of an old washing machine, put a tapered spindle on it, strapped it down to a board, and voila, I had my first polishing machine. It was great. But the problem was, as you saw on the back of the dust collection unit, it can be pretty dirty and dusty and gross. How can we prevent that? I found over the years that you can use a shallow pan either a pie pan or a plastic dish that's a little bit shallow that you can get underneath the wheel and put some water in it and lots of dish soap. What this does, it cuts the surface tension of the water and when the uh, polishing compounds and the particles off of the wheels hit the water because the surface tension has been broken, it goes right into the water and it stays there. Now, this is not 100%, but it sure takes a lot of that uh, crud out of the studio air. Again, make sure that you do wear your dust mask when you're polishing. So that's a little tip that you can use. Water and just soap and you're home free. I hope that you've enjoyed this video about polishing wheels and the safety of them. If you have any questions, always feel free to give me a comment. And if you haven't subscribed, make sure that you do subscribe so you don't miss out on any of the future videos. Thanks so much for watching. I really appreciate it. I'm Greg Greenwood, and I'll see you next time.